Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Since this is the metabolic classroom, you've been waiting to talk about whole body metabolism and insulin resistance. Well, unfortunately, there isn't too much on that topic, but what has been done is worth mentioning. One study showed creatine can reduce blood glucose spikes after or in the midst of a glucose tolerance test, providing some pretty strong evidence of improved glycemic control. Indeed, there's a mechanism that has been revealed, which is that creatine supplementation can enhance GLUT4 translocation. Now, you'll recall from earlier discussions, because you're such clever students, that when the muscle takes in glucose, it does so by opening this transporter that is called the glucose transporter 4 or GLUT4. Normally, that's only going to happen when insulin either comes and knocks on that door of the cell or the muscle cell is contracting and relaxing like during exercise. But creatine phosphate enhances that GLUT4 movement, which in turn enhances the ability of the muscle to pull in glucose, which in turn can help result in better blood glucose control. But there's even evidence to suggest that creatine supplementation in the absence of any other changes in other words, no other lifestyle habits can improve glycemic control in people with type 2 diabetes. So from the athlete to the sedentary type 2 diabetic, each can justify their supplementing with creatine and claim various benefits. Now, speaking of benefits, before we debunk a common creatine myth, I want to take a little moment to teach you about some of the lesser known benefits that most people, even some of these fitness supplement enthusiasts, might not know about. Because beyond powering ATP regeneration, creatine has remarkable effects on cellular health that could explain why it's so promising for myriad problems, including things like Alzheimer's disease. These include cell membranes, oxidative stress, and even some influencing of gene expression, as you'll see. All right, so first, let's talk about membrane stabilization. Creatine, especially in its creatine phosphate form, actually supports a type of lipid called phospholipids in the cell membrane. So phospholipids are one of the main components of the fatty parts of the membrane. And when the phospholipids are supported, it makes the membranes more robust. This is like reinforcing the walls of a fortress. It's protecting the muscle and brain cells and any other cells from damage during intense activity or stress, like a heavy deadlift or some sort of neurological crisis or early cognitive decline. A 2000, in the year 2000, published review in physio physiological reviews showed creatine integrates into lipid bilayers, which is the structure of the cell membrane, reducing the leakage of harmful ions and preserving the integrity of the cell. So this is something that could really be a game changer for neurons in Alzheimer's, where membrane damage can very much disrupt signaling along the membrane of the neuron. Now, second, I mentioned... There's the ability of creatine to reduce oxidative stress. Oxidative stress happens when reactive oxygen species are produced and then just begin bouncing around like a harmful pool uh, ball, banging into various molecules, proteins, lipids, DNA, etc. In this regard, creatine acts a little bit like a shield, indirectly boosting antioxidant enzymes like a big one called superoxide dismutase, and maybe even directly mopping up some of these rogue molecules. In fact, creatine supplementation was shown to cut oxidative damage in muscle and brain cells. In a 2002 study showed it scavenges these superoxide radicals. And the superoxide radical is one of the, it's essentially the first product of what we call reactive oxygen species. There's a series of events where one reactive oxygen species becomes another and then becomes another. When we talk about the superoxide radical, we're talking about it at the very beginning. This is huge for Alzheimer's, where oxidative stress has been shown to really be one of the ravaging, uh, having a ravaging role in the neuron. By stabilizing mitochondria, and curbing these harmful molecules, creatine could protect the brain cells, directly tying it into some of the benefits we've discussed.